Okay, so this would be Freak, obviously. Audio commentary, obviously. FreeWCBlitz.com, again, obviously. I don't know why I decided to say obviously three times in a row. Or repeat information that everyone knows, but I did it anyway, so screw you. 20 second marker 1x speed is the name of the game. Uh, we are uh, witnessing a Nettle versus Orc matchup, again, obviously. Maybe maybe that'll be uh, my word of the match. I'll just say obviously a whole lot. I'd be like, Zach Card's the best player in the world, obviously. Zeus is a noob, I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, I disagree with both those statements, I think. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, watch this from either player's point of view, we're going with Fog of War off, so, uh, whatever. And, uh, this is going to be, well, you'll, you'll see as it goes, I don't, I don't care. So let's go ahead and unpause this one. 20 second mark, one speed, Fog of War off. One of the player's point of view, so you don't watch, watch Ob's chat. Let's unpause in 3, 2, 1, unpause. Now you can probably tell that my nose is stuffed up. Yes, I have a cold. Again, as always, ETC, jur. Um, also, you can see that Zekard is doing a fast barracks build. Now, right now, let's go up to 2x speed because this part is uh, pretty uneventful. So, 2x speed in 3, 2, 1, go. So, we're at about uh, 50 seconds right now. Now, check this out. This is what all the ghosts do. See, you see that barracks? Oh, it, it disappeared. So, he just lost uh, 13 wood because apparently that's just. A, a good idea. He didn't scout. He wasn't scouted. He was just like, you know what? Let's just not do a barracks. You know, I mean, let's just be totally random and be a total noob and do that whole deal. Now, as for the card's base build, uh, you can see that he's got pretty much the, the four mind setup. You know, he never, I guess, modified his base build from there. And actually, really, that, that's a pr that's a pretty good idea because when you're facing night elf, you know, sometimes they're gonna huntress harass you. And the best thing you can do is to block off your peons a little bit so that, you know, they it's hard to get to them. And then put a burrow there so that if they actually get harassed, you can protect them. And it's it's pretty useful overall. It, it's a good thing to do. So, um, yeah, just do that. It's a good idea. Now, you can also see that uh, he has managed to kill a wisp. And he's sending his wolves in, and he's going to be doing the best he can to stop that expo. Except he uh, didn't really do jack about it. In any event, uh, you can see that uh, Wisp Detonate is greater than Spirit Wolves. And that's something. Okay, we're gonna speed, slow this back down, sorry. Slow this back down to 1x speed in 3, 2, 1, 1x speed. I'm at 345. Alright, now, in terms of Wisp Detonates, what you wanna do is. is. you know, ideally you get two wolves and a hero. I mean. Who wouldn't want to do that? That's always, 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 always worth the wisp. I don't care if it's your last wisp, and you, you're gonna, it's gonna build your tree of life so that you have a building so that you can win the game. Um, because you, you know, you're, you're doing a base race, and you know it's the last building, and you're, you're building a tree of life so that you don't lose. I'm sorry, it's worth the wisp. Screw you. Okay, maybe in that case it's not, but otherwise, I mean, there's no reason not to. Also, if you can get two wolves. Always detonate the wisp. If you can get one wolf from the hero, probably detonate the wisp. If it's just one wolf, try not to. If it's just the hero, don't. I mean, unless it's gonna get killed anyway, then you might as well send it back and go blow up on the hero. But for the most part, you're probably not gonna um, be forced to do that, so don't do it. It's just a total waste of a wisp. It's not worth it. So, with that in mind, uh. You can see that Zeus is doing a expo build, and you can see he has expansion up right now. And right now he's making dual war hunts. And now he's got another tree of life out. He can he has enough food to utilize that second engine of war. And so he's got some marches out in the beginning, and uh, Zekrod's go see micro prevented exp from that wolf. Essentially, I'm just kind of reciting to you what's happening in the game. I'm sorry. Now, one of the things about Night on Fast Expo is that you don't need to kill it right away. I mean, obviously, you know, the, the first reflex is he's built an expansion, ASDF, OMG, WTF, BBQ, let's go kill it. Right? Insert more acronyms here. And, you know, that's a pretty positive reflex because, I mean, the later you wait, the more money he gets, the less chance you have of actually killing the expo. Well, thing is, 
he also have to know when to attack. For instance, he's got 700 HP grunts, and he's got two level 1 heroes. What are you going to do with those? I mean, you're not going to stop an expansion with, you know, an Agent of War ready to make units and, you know, two, three hunts, two, three archers, something like that. You know, he has a better army, and unfortunately you're going to have to deal with that for a short time. Now what you are going to eventually do is try to kill Huntresses anyway. And now this is pretty much just luck on his part, as he's going to somehow manage to kill these Huntresses off. Because suddenly here comes a Wyvern or two, and uh, he's now <laughs> starting killing Huntresses. And this is really horrible for Zeus. He's getting blocked off by his warden a little bit. And, I mean, Zekar couldn't be any luckier. I mean, I, you know, he, in any other sort of game, I mean, that wouldn't have happened. You know, he would have hid the hunts or something. But this is what you do against um, Night Elf Expoers. You go Wyvern. Because, I mean, that's, that's just how you do it. Because, I mean, this, this is pretty much the reason. Night Elf is really bad at protecting two bases at once. Archers have very few hit points. APs are the worst towers in the game. Um, even with tracking there, they do the least damage of everything in the game, and they have the least durability of everything in the game, if you don't count fortified armor. Now you can also see he's continually still getting lucky with, th with that archer right there, killing the archer, and, you know, I mean, some of it's also being in the lag environment from, you know, having to have a US host, as, you know, you're playing Europe player versus Korea player. This was back when Zeus was in uh, Europe, although he's back to Europe now. It was also back when Zekard was in uh, Korea. So, in any event, um, essentially Wyvern are the choice against uh, expanding Night Elves because it is pretty easy to pick off the archers. I mean, sure, he's only got two level one AOE spells. He doesn't even have the mana on the Farseer to cast to cast Chain Lightning, and you can also see that. Zeus now has an AP on each base. However, Zeus does not have a creeping force. If Zeus creeps, Zekrad's going to kill it. And exerting that sort of strong... I guess you could just say that sort of map control, you know? I mean, l look at everything he's creeped versus what Zeus has crept. I mean, Zeus crept his expansion and got himself level 2. After that, he's gained 150 EXP. Meanwhile, Zekrad's leveled both his heroes up to 2 off of creeping. And now he's saying, okay, well, you know, let's, let's do a fight, and let's see if my opponent even has any good anti-air. As you can see, Zeus really kind of doesn't. He has anti-grunt, but he doesn't have anti-wyvern. And so, he's just utilizing his heroes getting rid of archers, and pretty much separating Zeus's force. And this is one of the huge inherent weaknesses of Huntresses. They are so weak to piercing. I mean, yeah, he's managed to just about kill that wyvern right there, and, uh doesn't, again, lucker, and you can just see, you know, how much AoE spells can actually knock out these archers, I mean, you know, it's not, they don't do a lot of damage at once, but it's, it's just enough to, you know, bring them into red hit points and, you know, kill them afterwards, and, I mean, you're not looking for, you know, some 500 damage AoE spell that suddenly kills every unit on the map, I mean, you're gonna have to wear stuff down slowly at a time, you know, a little bit at a time. I mean, how do you think 40 average damage wind riders manage to somehow kill a hunter? I mean, it takes 10 shots, at, you know, and that's not even counting the fact that they have two armor, so it'll take more like 12. I mean, considering you have four women and they attack at average, even with endurance aura, I mean, that's gonna take some time, right? But it's realizing that you know what, you know, you have the time. I mean, you know, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be able to you know, hit them a couple times and, you know, cast your AoE, you'll be okay. And, you know, it's pretty much the pressure in keeping the unit count down that's gonna win this for that card. Oh, I just went to the end of the game. Oh, darn. Um, but, I mean, the reality of it is that if, you know, you have an advantage, you have to keep pressing that. Now, you can't go and, you know, lose all your units, as, you know, I probably would have done if I were in Zakar's position, because, you know, that's just gonna bring whatever advantage you had back into the Night Elf favor. I mean, you know, he's going to win by picking up a couple units, running back, picking up some more units, running back, and ultimately, you know, fighting every battle in his favor, and winning through heroes, if not through units. Because, I mean, just the specific weakness of Night Elf against Wyvern is they don't have a good counter. I mean, Hippogriffs, countered by bats. Dryads, suck. Dots. Dots are good if they're a crow form. However, very few Night Elves realize how strong they are, and even then, you could use bats occasionally. Now, they cost less than bats, and they're fairly durable, but, again, you could still use bats. Um, 
and then it's a sort of, you know, juggling game of go in the air, get out of the air, how many bats does he have, you know, etc. And yeah, that's rather difficult, but, you know, overall, um, you know, you're stuck with archers, because they do a lot of damage, they have good range, but they have no hit points. And because of that, that is uh, how Orc can actually even beat uh, Land of Expanders a lot of the time, is because you force them to make a lot of archers, and then you just kill them with level 2 Shockwave, as you're going to see pretty much right here. Shockwave. You know, everything's in the yellow right now. And now let's go ahead and pause, this, uh, pause the replay. Pause in 3, 2, 1, pause. I'm at 11.30, and I'm paused. Remember, pause, pause, okay. Now, now you can see sort of what's happening in this battle. Now, this already looks pretty good for Zeus, right? I mean, he's got, you know... 51 food versus 58, right? He's got this, uh, you know, key for the grove out, entangling stuff. He's got a level 3 warden, and he's got some wisps. However, uh, what you don't realize, I guess, or you can, pretty much, is that Zachary both has a Book of the Dead and Aurora Scroll, and he also has a healing scroll, and he's got level 2 shockwave. And level 2 shockwave is really, really powerful. And what he's going to be trying to do is, you know, focus Fire the Windrunners on the right damage type, but also. Make sure that they're not sitting there above the archers, because if you give them five seconds, you're going to start losing wind riders. I mean, it does not take long for archers to pick off wind riders when they have, you know, 240 effective hit points. I mean, not even, you know, 240 damage uh, and, you know, 18 and a half average. That doesn't take that long. I mean, it'll take, you know, 10, 15, 10, 15 shots, but, I mean, he's got like seven, eight archers. He's got also dryads and dots and fairy fire. And you know, F O K and stuff. It's not going to take long to really pick off those winners. It'll take you know two and a half seconds apiece, pretty much, because archers attack very quickly. I mean, it says average right there, but it, they attack more quickly than you know. Now, uh, as for Zakhar, though, he has you know these level two wolves. He has this level two shockwave, and he's not going to use chain lightning a lot. But you know, if he has the mana, of course, we'll use it a little bit. But you know, his primary concern is keeping wolves on the board because they do so much damage. And, you know, he's going to be trying to focus, you know, on the right damage types. You know, it's generic stuff, so it can't get away. And, you know, using the power of he power of his heroes, as he has his hero advantage, as best he can. You know, it's 3-3 three, three versus 3-1, three, and you have to use that. If you don't, you've lost the game. Because, again, Night Elf has a money advantage. You know, they're going to get more units than you eventually. You're going to counter that with strong area of effect, and, you know, continual pressure when he doesn't have a full counter. I mean, if he has 12 archers and 2 healing scrolls, I'm sorry, you're not going to win with, with Wyvern no matter how much AOE you have, you know. You Shockwaves, you Healing Scroll, you Chain Lightnings, you Healing Scroll, Wyvern are all gone. You know? And that's what's going to happen You know, if you don't keep the numbers down and you, you know, don't keep your heroes above his and, you know, all that. So, that's, you know, what you're going to have to do with Orc. That's kind of how this battle's going to turn out. He's going to try to focus the right damage types and, you know, keep the Windrunners out of range. Luckily for him, Zeus doesn't have range on his archers. That's going to prove to be... Pretty killer for me. He's not even researching it right now. On well, neither of his AOW. So, let's unpause and see what happens. Unpause in 3, 2, 1. Unpause. So here we go. You're going to see the detonates go off. Shockwave go off as well. He's gotten rid of the wolves, but as you can see, he's pulled that Farseer back. And he's got level 4. And again, he summons the wolves. And then he summons the Book of the Dead. You know, making sure he waits for the, uh... For the Wisp to get out of the way. And you can see, you know... Once he's got this you know, good position on him, and you know, once he started to pick off those units, he suddenly got a whole bunch of red archers to deal with because he didn't allow his opponent to get what he needed. He didn't allow him to get healing scrolls, and it's it's a blend of creeping and pressure that's going to win you the game. Zekar is extremely smart in realizing you're not going to be able to attack a nano phase very easily. Let's go ahead and hold off for a second. You know, he's going to spend some time healing up. In the meantime, I'm going to go creep. You know. And it's not hard to go creeping. I mean, you just start attacking creeps, you kill them. And, uh, you know, since his summon units are going to time out, he's uh, just going to, you know, make the best use of them as he can. So you can see how this uh, is going to work out. He gets Claws of Attack 12, which is pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, okay, so. Gets himself a tome, almost level 5. Would have got level 5 if he didn't bring his Farseer in. That's one of the things you have to realize a little bit, is making, you know, making sure you, you get the right level. If he had a level 5 TC right now, it would have won the game right now.
I mean, I can guarantee you, there's no way he, you know, he can just attack right now either base and win because of the level 5 TC. And now also, a little bit of what he's doing, though this is, this is so much intentional, is he's letting Zeus get across the map so that he's going to have to burn a TP. And now that doesn't really matter so much, because, you know, he's got the expansion, but, you know, he's only got 150 gold right now, and sure, you know, the income comes in twice as fast, uh, you know, because he's got the two gold mines and they're both at low upkeep. You know, it still means that, you know, that 350 gold is, you know, 350 gold that Zeus doesn't have, and, you know, as much as he can, I guess, uh, what I'm saying is, you know, uh, the more he can make Zeus spend, the, the less uh, effective his expansion is, and the better chance he has of actually, you know, winning the game. So, you can see he doesn't even have many grunts anymore, I mean, he doesn't really have anything that's good against archers except just his heroes, and you can see, he's picking off the level 5 TC, and, you know, getting his Farseer up a little bit higher, you know, getting closer to 5, you, you can see he pulled the, the TC back so that his Farseer would get full EXP from the creep. He's now ready to move on. And, uh, again, he got lucky from the creep shack. I mean, there, there's no doubt about that. He, he wasn't saying, Zeus is going to be creeping this merchant shop because XYZ reason. I mean, he was running across the map probably looking for a creep shack and probably looking for a rally. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't think he knew exactly where he was going to be creeping. I mean, I don't know. You know, I'm not a pro gamer. Maybe he did think he was going to be doing that, but judging by his path across the map, I don't think so. In any event, he uh, is now coming to attack, and you can see Scout Wisps are very important for Night Elf. I think one of the things that Night Elf should do with their Wisps is build more than you need. I mean, you know, I don't think they're as... Pause. Let's go ahead and pause in 3, 2, 1, pause, because we're going to go over the battle. I'm going to go over Wisps for a short time before I go over the battle. So you can go ahead and evaluate who you think is going to be, you know, uh, doing best in this battle. Now, the thing with Wisps is, you know, they're good vision. If you get Ultra Vision, which I recommend you do, it costs almost nothing. Um, scatter them around the map. My, my favorite thing to do in Lost Temple is put them behind each uh, natural expansion gold mine. Do it at night, and then when the creeps wake up, you know, they won't come after your wisp. And then any time your opponent expands, specifically if they're undead, you can see it. That's won me a game I just played earlier today, at the time of the recording of this audio. Maybe, you know, three hours ago. Uh, might, might be or might have been posted. I don't know. In any event, uh, scout wisps are important. Uh, I don't think they're quite as efficient as other races' workers, at least, you know, if they're close to the town hall or close to a lump mill or whatever. Um, but they cost less gold, and, you know, Night Elf can be very wood-intensive if you're not careful. And so, and also you can always detonate them if you need to get to a food count, you know? I mean, you, know, you stock up on wood, you detonate half your wisps away, you know, you can live off of that wood for, for you know, uh, a, a short time. So, you know, also it can lead you up to so many creep jacks that, you know, if you're at a disadvantage in the game, it can turn the game around for you. So, if you're losing a game, make wisps. I, that seems crazy, but I mean, if your army is close enough to theirs that you could actually win a fight if you creep jack, and then start making wisps and spread them around the map. Make sure you have ultra vision. Use moonstones if you want, you know, carry around moonstones so that you could get, you know, extra crazy on creep jacks, I guess. And, you know, that's how you, that's how you can pull games out of the gutter for Night Elf. Human, again, you know, scout farms, of course, undead, shades, that's, you know, rather hard to do. And, uh, Orc, eh, you're pretty much screwed, but good luck using wolves, I guess. But I think Night Elf is the best at coming back if you can, you know, expand a cr some, at some random points, and if you can, uh, scout with Creepjack. Now, as for this battle, um, you can see Zeus is doing pretty well getting just a few Hippogriffs, and that's how you're going to do well against Orc Air. You just get a few of them, because that way, you know, they don't know how much to get to bat. Now, he's got four and that's pretty much the max you should ever go. I mean, you get more than that, and you're just asking to you're just asking to get owned by bats. I mean, they're, they're gonna they're just, they're gonna do that. They're get, they're just gonna own your hippos with bats. They're gonna get two or three, and they're gonna chain lightning. They're all gonna die. You get four. That's pretty much perfect because you know they're not sure how many bats to get. And I think one thing to do even with undead, just have two gargs. No matter what the matchup is, have two gargs. They're gonna be thinking about them the entire time. They'll be like. What is he doing with these gargs? And they're going to end up doing something that they wouldn't normally do just because of the gargs. And, you know, they're still useful units. You, know, you can go harass the peasant line, 
and you know they may not get a tower or you know they may get a tower because of that and you know now they spent a hundred gold they didn't have to and you can still you know run around the map with gargoyles and whatnot and so just get an anti you know, just get one or two air units with anything you know all the time you know if you're fighting you know, against orc, you're fighting against elf, anything, well, elf, obviously, but just, you know, just get a little bit of air in, in every in every matchup you play, because it, you'll just throw your player in a loop, and they'll be wondering what you're doing, and they'll end up doing something crazy, and you can continue owning them with your ground army. And specifically with orc, they won't know how many bats to get, and they'll probably go overboard, and you're in good shape. So, let's go ahead and uh, unpause this game. Uh, Zekard is going to be you know, using his AoE on the arch as best he can. You can see that the archer count is getting pretty low as Zeus is now relying on hippogriffs more. And uh, that's probably one of the best things you can do is you know just get those few and you know the rest of your army just you know get moderate amounts of everything. And it's hard to counter because you know you can't absolute counter one unit because there's all these other unit types that are going against you. So let's unpause in three, two, one, unpause. You're gonna see that though. Uh, the the food count is uh, in Zeus's favor. It's gonna be the hero spells that are gonna win the game. You know, four five versus uh, four two, and that makes a pretty big difference. Because you can see that this ground army of Zekard is, uh, you know, he was pretty smart in getting, you know, increasing his ground army a little bit, not going just mass wyvern anymore, and uh, you know, just completely ripping through it with. Level 3 Shockwave, level 2 Chain. It deals immense damage. He just got rid of all the archers, all the hunts, all the dots. And then the dryads, he's just working on them with the raiders. Okay, so. Um, you know, Zeus is uh, you know, healing up. And. Uh, which is, you know, what, you know, what you can do if you force your opponent to TP out. Take the fountain, always. You're playing on Lost Temple, you take the fountain. Whenever you can, I mean, after a battle. If you force a TP, always, always, always go for the fountains. It's, you know, because you've got this little bit of high ground, or you've got, you know, the healing effect, that if he comes for it, you know, you've got an advantage of that fight. And as long as, you know, and as, you know, considering that you're the one who made your opponent TP out, you probably have a better army. And so there's no way that he's going to be able to take that from you. So he's got to come up with another way of healing. Specifically in Night Elf Mirror, this is going to mean a lot because they're going to have to use all their moon wells, which means you can go attack their base and they have no way of healing. Well, you, know, you if they counterattack you, you've got moon wells there, so you're going to win. And so now you can see raiders are just ownage because they own dryads and stuff. Now, also he's realized that you know hippogriffs are not something that he wants to deal with anymore, and so he's stopped making air. And I think. Uh, a lot of the way to be really good at this game is to be able to adapt your strategy. I mean, he was intent on using air until Zeus did well to adapt and made just four hippogriffs. I mean, if Zeus made even more hippogriffs than he did already, I mean, he'd be in a horrible position. I mean, if he made, like, seven? I mean, that amount of money spent on hippogriffs, which all they can do is hit air? I mean, that's horrible. You know, you're not going to gain anything from, from doing that. And so, you know... Don't uh, don't go overboard, you know. Keep tabs on your opponent's army so that you don't do something rash like make seven hippogriffs and lose. I was gonna lose anyway, but anyway. Um, also, something smart that uh, that guy's been doing is you know pulling his opponent away from the moon wells, and that's something that any night elf will easily get caught doing. Is, you know, running away from their moon wells, chasing stuff down. I mean, you make it look like they're winning, and they'll chase you anyway. I mean, and that's when you come in with a flank of whatever. I think one or one of the best things to do, although I've never really seen it, but you know, this is of course theory craft. I think it'd be immensely uh, strong. Is you know, you make a bunch of you know, you you make a fair amount of grunts, and you, let's say you even have a you even have a hidden expo, and you and you and you devote the the resources of that expansion to just making wyvern. But you just you know, you keep plugging away, making a bunch of grunts, and you know, getting getting uh, he, speed scrolls and healing scrolls and whatnot. And you know you you front a fight at your opponent's base, and you say, "Oh crap, I'm losing." You run back, and then suddenly he's got you know, his huntress and dot and dryad force following you, and suddenly you come in with twelve wyvern and you just decimate the back line. And he has no idea that you've been making them because you haven't shown the units. And I don't know. I think it'd be pretty cool just throwing this uh, crazy flanking maneuver in there with air. 
And, you know, that's, that's sort of what he's done. It's something that you can really do with, uh, uh, when you have raiders, is, is you pull your opponent away from where he wants to be, and you ensnare them, and suddenly, oh crap. And that's something you can do against Metal Fast Expanders early game, you know, when you do a tier 2 rush, you know, as soon as you get raiders. Because, you know, they've got Huntresses, and you've got Grunt Raider, and... You know, they're, they're hitting your Grunts, because, you know, Hunts are faster than Grunts, and Hunts usually beat Grunts. Especially when you've got Moonwells nearby, and you've got a Warden or a DH, you know, hitting the hero and whatnot. And so, you know, you hit the Grunts, and they run back, because, you know, they're getting an orange hit point. Suddenly a Raider shows up instead of the Hunt, and you can't do anything about that Huntress, and you're going to lose that Huntress. So now you're saying, well, do I stay and try to keep fighting him? Get another Huntress ensnared, or do you run away, cut your losses? And that's, you know, another skill, you know, to have as an out of player, and also as, a orc, as an Orc player, you know, pulling the guy away. Um, is, you know, how much do you support what's been ensnared, and how much do you just say, look, I'm going to lose that unit regardless, let's not lose any more. And judging that is, you know, an important skill on, on both sides of the matchup. You know, how long can you stay in the fight and focus and kill something, and uh, how much are you just going to have to run away from it? And some of that is like the old Keep the Girl Dual Rex Mass Hunts, where you couldn't leave your base until you got, you know, catapults and a Shadow Hunter. And, you know, in that game, you just had to say, okay, is my opponent away from me? Okay, well, now I'm going to creep this easy green camp. And, okay, now I'm going to creep this one. And you always keep it, keep, you know, an eye open. You always keep, like, a like a scout wolf. Either way back your army to see if he's coming in after you. And, you know, a lot of the game is just not getting caught in bad positions. And I think that's a lot of what Zakhar did to, to Zeus this game. He you know, pulled him away from his moon wells, or, you know, he made him fight against his Massey or an AoE army. And, though he never actually did a sort of, you know, dual harassment thing, that I sort of mentioned earlier, it's one of the things you can do, especially with air. Um, you know, Zeus was ready for it as he built the APs, and so, you know, there's another 300 something gold gone for Zeus, you know, the two wisps plus the cost of the APs. And, you know, none of has to do that, just to be ready. And so, you know, I know someone made a comment in that replay saying, you know, he won even with, you know, a 6,000 gold deficit. Well, it wasn't so much that, because Zeus had to spend a lot more money either, you know, getting infrastructure, you know, two AOWs plus an Ancient of Lore plus an Ancient of Wind is not something you'd normally get off of one base. At least you wouldn't get the second AOW, you know, that much. Yeah, he also might not have gotten the Keeper, which really ended up not being a super useful hero. I think getting a fast level 5 warden would be even better. Or even going like Blink Strike Warden and just, you know, soloing the Farseer every battle and, you know, forcing him away and forcing TPs and whatnot. Yeah, I guess, uh, that's all for this audio. I can't think of really anything else to mention. Uh, Diaboss is a noob. I'd still like to continue the poll of who is the bigger noob, Diaboss or Diabolical, as I didn't get a lot of results last time. I got quite a few, and some people made some very uh, humorous comments. Uh, I guess this will be the end of this audio. Hope you enjoy it. DOS is still a noob for now. This will be Freak signing out. Bye.